I am totally opposed to the Mays Long Kesh site. That not only will there be a narrative to tell the Provo story, it will be available on DVD and CD. That there is no moral equivalence whatsoever between murderers and the innocent victims of murder. <laughs> These cowards skulked behind hedges, they planted bombs under cars, they murdered innocent civilians, they shot women. It is a critical demand, nay requirement, of Irish Sinn Féin that any centre that is built must be built there. And they see how the bloody Sunday inquiry could spend eight millions. But the people of Enniskill or Kingsville haven't got that same support or financial help. I am totally opposed to the Mays Long Cash site. How could anybody have their victim stories told at a site that will have the stories of the person or the peoples who murdered our innocent people in this country? All victim stories should be told, but not by dancing on the graves of our loved ones by having it at the Mays. A shrine to terrorists at the Mays, and then a skill we don't have a memorial for our loved ones. As the banner at the front of the stage says, there was a reason why Bin Laden was buried at sea. Americans don't glorify terrorists. They don't accept them in power, but we have to. Where is the justice for our loved ones? So I am totally opposed to the Mays Long Case Site. Thank you. Unfortunately, I became a victim whenever the IRA murdered my sister Mary while she was walking home from Mass with my parents. And as Mary and I died in my mother's arms, the gunman went over and held the gun to Mum's head, where the gun jammed twice, while another gunman shot my dad six times as he lay on the ground, but he survived. I miss Mary every day of my life. I was 14 when she was murdered. It had a huge effect on me. It affected my education, it affected my relationships, it affected me even as a parent. I find that I am, um, well I, I trust I suppose, maybe I'm quite naive, but I know that whenever Mary McCarty was appointed a special advisor in 2011, Something happened inside of me. It was like a lion woke up. I wasn't going to take any more. I couldn't take any more. After my sister was murdered, I went on to develop an eating disorder. The only way I could control part of my life was by binging and purging. There was no way Sinn Féin were going to do that to me again. Then I heard that this wonderful centre was going to be at the maze. I was flabbergasted. Why on earth would anyone who had been hurt during the Troubles want to go out to a prison to tell their stories? To the very place where some of our abusers were sent to. Why would any innocent victim want to go out to a prison site? But this, again, is only my own personal opinion. I then heard that it was going to be a fabulous building, architecturally superb, that the site is huge and ripe for development and away from the hospital block. I thought in the recent words of Sinn Féin Minister John O'Dowd, so what? <laughs> How is having a superb building going to help any innocent victim being asked to visit a former prison site to tell their story? Where egos will already exist from those who were imprisoned there, their families and supporters. Innocent victims, in my opinion, won't be on an equal footing. I am here in my official capacity as the Deputy Grand Master of the Grand Orange Lodge of Ireland. I am more than happy to be here this evening to speak on this particular matter because this is a matter that crosses unionist political boundaries and with the presence of Anne on our platform here this evening, it also actually crosses religious boundaries as well. <laughs> uh, 
Approximately 1 in 10, or if you like, 337 of the people killed during the Troubles were members of the Orange Order. And it is a painfully sad statistic that underlines just how much our own loyal institution has suffered. And therefore the Grand Orange Lodge of Ireland meeting at Lisbon Law on Wednesday the 12th of June expressed its opposition to the proposed construction of a peace building and conflict resolution centre at the site of the former Mays prison. We expressed our opposition to that for three main reasons. First of all, we believe that the sensitivities of the innocent victims of terrorism must be paramount in this decision-making process. And we've been keeping our ear to the ground. We have been listening to what our brethren throughout the jurisdiction have been saying. We have also been meeting with various victims groups, particularly from the uh, unionist community. We have met with representatives of various victims groups over the past couple of years and indeed also in very recent weeks. We have been aware of the feelings of a group like the RUC George Cross Association. And with all of these people who have been at the uh, front line of the battle and who have lost loved ones, I think the least that we can do, folks, is listen to them and take their views on board. The second reason why we're against this proposed project is because we further believe that the construction of this centre will inevitably further the efforts of those who effectively wish to rewrite history by equating the perpetrators of violence with those innocent victims. And let it be said plainly from this podium here tonight, and let it be said by a Christian minister, that there is no moral equivalence whatsoever between murderers and the innocent victims of murder. And we do need to remember the horrors of 30 years of terror. It wasn't a war. A lot of people would like to call it a war, wasn't it? It was 30 years of terror. I don't need a center to remind my children of what it was like. I remember. I'm sure there's many, another one here. But if we are going to have a center to go forward with, this is one of the reasons I was invited here, was because having served in the army, the specials, and the prison service, I speak with three voices. The man that wore that hat. And I would like to think that there would be somewhere where my children, my grandchildren, could go and recognize those who served Ulster. But the last thing I would want would be to have my name beside a program or a terrorist. I don't want to go back to those times, but neither do I want to give credence to those that created those victims and created and made that murder and mayhem for the people of our society. It was a disgrace then. It was a disgrace and a shame then, and it is a disgrace and a shame that they should be remembered in today's society in some sort of romantic story that we hear coming from many in Sinn Féin. 
And I have been in those debates and I have heard how Sinn Féin explain that their hunger strikers were hard done by. That they were starved to death by the UK government, or as they call it, the British government. That they were heroes in our society. But what sort of heroes were they when they went out and murdered their neighbours and fellow citizens? They were tireless, they were murderers, and they deserve to be treated like that. And they don't deserve a shrine. <laughs> they don't deserve a shrine, and they don't deserve the retention of the prison buildings at the mills. They should be flattened, no question about it, they should be flattened and cleared. <laughs> At this stage, ladies and gentlemen, I would also like us to remember Willie Fraser and her thoughts and prayers as well. Yeah. Well, Willie sadly, after being treated very badly at the beginning of the week, is in hospital and I, I'm not sure this evening when he's got home but I understand he was still in hospital. And I think it is those people, irrespective of how they do it, that deserve our support. Make no mistake about it, this present plan to impose a shrine at the maze is a betrayal of every innocent victim in this country. <laughs> Let me just nail a particular lie. I've heard it said, we're against economic development at the maze. We're not against economic development at the maze. We're against that which would glorify terrorism at the maze. truth, Mr. Chairman, is this, that the price for even economic activity on the mills, courtesy of Sinn Féin, is the price the DUP is prepared to pay, namely the shrine at the mills. Jeffrey Donaldson. <laughs> Jeffrey Donaldson, the new salesman for the mills, recently had to admit that if they wanted anything on the mills site, they had to agree to the Conflict Resolution Centre. That means the glorification of the IRA, the rewrite of history. And yet Geoffrey tells us the name of Bobby Sands won't even be mentioned. <laughs> Who does he think he's kidding? Does he think we're fools? And yet that is the foolish suggestion that he makes to us. You can well imagine. American visitors, misty-eyed, romanticized in their Republican diet that they've been fed over the years, arriving at the maze. Do you think they're coming to see the nice, shiny new building? Not a bit of it. They get off the bus. They will ask, where did Bobby Sands die? Where did that great hero of Irish nationals, who was done to death by the wicked oppressive British government. Where did he have his struggle? Geoffrey says his name won't ever even be mentioned. <laughs> and as for flowers, there's certainly be no flowers at the maze. Geoffrey's going to see to it. <laughs> as I heard Mike Nesbitt say on a media programme, 
what's Jeffrey going to do when the misty-eyed Irish American turns up with these posy of flowers? Is he going to call the water cannon? <laughs> the argument whether we do or don't. But if we need a conflict resolution centre, why would you ever build it at the most toxic, the most divisive site you can find anywhere in Northern Ireland? The maze is the last place that anyone with any wit would wish to build a conflict Resolution Centre. Do the DUP and Sinn Féin think we're all fools? <coughs> do, re do they really think that what we see is so different to what they see? And therein lies the rub, part of the reason we're here. Everybody sees it as a shrine, but the DUP and Sinn Féin don't. Do the First and Deputy First Ministers believe they can get away with bluffing and pulling the wolves over our eyes by calling this shrine a, a peace centre, a conflict resolution centre, anything but. But it's plainly obvious it's going to be, and that's a terrorist shrine. They tell us there's going to be a narrative, but they haven't agreed on it. But don't worry, they say it will be all right on the night. They tell us that the narrative will not be agreed until everything's agreed. But listen, haven't we been told the same about parades and about flags? And what are the DUP Sinn Féin buddies doing together about parades and flags? Well, they're putting them into new talks with the answers and solutions to be delivered by Christmas. Pity is they haven't told us by which Christmas. And you can just hear, you can hear the Irish Americans having landed by a cruise liner in their droves on their pilgrimage to the Provo Shrine. You can hear them saying to the tour guides, tell me Peter and Martin as joint curators, where did Bobby die? Was it here the hunger strikers lay? What memento of this hallowed Provo grind can I take away? And the guide would say to them, sorry mate, none of that's in the narrative and there's no memento to take away. That's what you're being told. Well, of course there will be something to buy and of course what the homage pair wants to hear will be in the narrative. That is exactly the propaganda approval legend Republicans want promoted and pushed and sold from this shrine. And it won't stop there. You can bet your shirt that not only will there be a narrative to tell the Provo story, it will be available on DVD and CD in, of course, an authentic Irish language version. <laughs> you know, a legacy left in politics should always be something to be proud of. No unionist could be proud to be associated with this product, which is not short of a sellout. So send out the message loud and clear. No shrine. It's as simple as that. Thank you. We are here tonight to talk about this so-called reconciliation centre. How can you reconcile terrorism with peacekeeping? How can you reconcile those that came out to blow our country to hell and back with peace? When I was 19, I was at the home of one of my former colleagues who had been murdered by the IRA. His father insisted that we go in to see him, resting in his coffin. He had a bullet hole here, he had a bullet hole here, and between here and there, there was nothing but a bandage. Now I am now 54 years of age, and I can remember that every time I close my eyes. 
The person that murdered my colleague has never seen the inside of a courtroom for that particular murder. I work closely with victims groups in my own area. In Castle Derg is one area where over 29 members of the security forces were murdered and not one person was taken to court or brought to book for those murders. These cowards skulked behind hedges, they planted bombs under cars, they murdered innocent civilians, they shot women, and they did it deliberately, and they hid from their responsibilities. They are not heroes, they were murderous thugs and terrorists. If any politician allows this shrine to go ahead, they should hang their head in shame if they want to call themselves a unionist. They are doing no service to the unionist people, and all they are doing is keeping the glorification of terrorism alive. This must be stopped, and as has been said by previous speakers, there's one way to do it, and that is by the loyalists taking their feet and their voices to the DUP. The DUP must listen, because we are the people that can take them in and take them out. You really must rate You must bring this to the door of every DUP politician that you know, because some of them are hiding and skulking. They are hiding out of your way because they don't want this to really affect them. This doesn't happen to nice people. Well, it's happening to us, and it must go to the door of the DUP. They once said, never, 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 but we must say, no, no, no. And the issues I have with me is are very simple, that whenever the terrorists were released from prison, they were released as terrorists on their licence. And the difficulty we have now is that if this peace centre is built, they'll go back to be able to visit as victims. And uh, I certainly don't see that that was in, in what we had agreed, even if we did agree with it, the Good Friday Agreement at the time. More to the point, the, um, the issue itself um, is supposed to be uniting people and a shared future and all this sort of stuff is extremely divisive and for me it's the most divisive um, subject next to the definition of victim which has been the most divisive issue of all.